Hey guys, Auspicious Shozzy here, and welcome to another AS Monaco series episode. This is episode 32, I believe, and it is, of course, the end of season review. So, as you can see, we did finish second once again to PSG this time, and um, Marseille obviously came third somewhere, or well, some way, I should say, behind myself and PSG. Um, so there's the league table completely round out. As you can see, Montpellier did get the Europa League spot for the um, French Cup final that they were in with us in the previous episode, um, which we of course won. Um, the three relegated clubs are Bordeaux, which is surprising, RC Lens and FC Nantes, so those teams will be going down next season. Um, Lyon and AS Saint Etienne, who had a very good season. They were, they were fourth and I think third for quite some time. Um, both get Europa League and uh, Marseille steals that third spot in um, what was actually quite close between those three teams. Five points separated third and fifth. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the two games we lost, um, or drew actually, the two games we drew have basically cost us the um, league this season. So the quest continues, the challenge I have set myself of winning League One um, goes on. For another season, so I guess it's good for you guys because it means more AS, Mon AS Monaco series episodes. Um, but anyway, we should get into the fixtures. Um, we've got quite a lot to get through. Um, I've got to find out where we were from the mid-season review. All right, so we had Leon, two Leon games in a row. First of all, was a nil-all draw away from home, and then we lost the Coupe de la Ligue semi-final 2-1 to Leon. Very disappointing, as you can see, two red cards. Um, our goal came from Acampos. Papadopoulos was sent off in the 13th, and then Luzzi got his second yellow in the 87th, um, which also gave away a penalty, so Luzzi basically cost us the game there. Um, so yeah, we missed out on getting to the final in the Coupe de Ligue, and I absolutely fucking hate it when it does that. Um, so yeah. Um, PSG was up next, and... We managed to beat them, which is, you know, fairly surprising because um, they actually beat us to the title this season. So, yeah, as you can see, these couple of draws here, the draw with Leon, all these games basically screwed us over actually winning the league this year because um, we went, like, massive... Like, there was massive times of unbeaten right there. So we beat PSG 2-1 at home. Fairly impressive. Benteep and Kanga scored our goals. Cavani... Um, Kanga picked up a man of the match performance. Really hate it when it does this. It's really, really annoying. Um, the next game was, of course, Los Gliel in the Coupe de France 11th round. We beat them 3 0. Fairly straightforward. Gulor, Kanga, Abormiang, and Acampos getting our goals there and also meant we kept a clean sheet. Um, where are we at? Further down. RC Lens was the next game. We beat, the, oh, we drew with them, sorry, 2 all. Um, fairly disappointing, to actually say the least, but um, we did open the scoring through Campos. Kanga also got one to get us back in the lead, but we threw it away. Um, as you can see, Abormiang pretty much played his last game for us there. Um, made a few more sub-appearances, um, but that 5.9 was quite disappointing. Um, Stedronas was up next. Beat them 3-0 at home. Fairly straightforward, a campos and a brace for Gilllock Hanger. And this is really pissing me off now. Is there a way to filter it? No. Three dates, no, no, no. Anyway, um, I'll continue like this, I guess. It's probably really annoying for you guys as well, though. Um, Shamwan Note was up next, and we drew two all with them at home. Again, you know, drop points here um, through them getting back in the game. Lucy opened the scoring in the eighth. Horatio Gomez. Um, got us a lead back to 2-1 before throwing it away again. So, you know, there's two games right there when we could have, which would have won us the league, essentially. So that's really disappointing. Um, but anyway, we moved on to the Champions League first knockout round. We managed to draw 2-all with Borussia Dortmund um, at the Signal Laguna. And as you can see, Campos and Kangal getting our goals once again. Absolute beast this season. Angelo Henriquez, the um, player that starts at Manchester United, um, has gone on to do very good things for Borussia Dortmund. He got a brace for them 
and as you can see, he's pretty world class. So yeah, two all draw in the first leg, which of course, you know, sets us up pretty nicely with the two away goals. We then beat uh, Marseille two 0 away from home at the uh, Velodrome. Horacio Gomez and a 93rd minute penalty for Matinho gave us all three points in the league there. We then, no, further down. We then faced Montpellier, beat them 7-0 in the league. You know, very emphatic result. They did have a player sent off, so that probably aided towards it. Actually, it definitely did, because we only scored one goal before then. Gulor Kanga, Ignacio Lopez, Papadopoulos, a hat-trick for Charles Bassey. Was it a hat-trick, or was it more? Uh, one, two, three. It was a hat-trick. And Benjamin Adams scored a penalty in the 80th minute. Um, Stad Renas was up next. A very, very close game. 3-2 victory for us, though, away from home. Oh, actually, it wasn't that close, but anyway. A Campos, Ulrich, and Gomez got our goals, and Sane got a goal in the 89th and 92nd minute. So two very late goals for Renas there, um, but we did manage to beat them. Then came the second leg of the first knockout round of the Champions League, and we beat Dortmund 3-1 at home. You know, fairly comfortable. They did open the scoring through Henriquez once again, but Papadopoulos, Kanga, and Gomez got our goals, and Papadopoulos absolutely beasted it at the back for us. We then face Oxore, beat them 2-1 in the league. Again, Gomez and Papadopoulos, and a Menard goal for Oxore. The next game was against Le Mans in the Coupe de France quarterfinal. We managed to beat them 3-1 at home with a Gomez hat-trick. They get it, did get a goal back through Cedo in the 90th minute, but obviously it was too little too late. We then faced Chelsea in the uh, Champions League quarterfinal first leg. Massive high-scoring game, 5-3 Chelsea beat us. Um, Bayram, Kovacic, Hazard and Falcao, <laughs> cheeky Falcao right there, getting their goals. And Adams, Gomez and Lopez getting our goals. We did get three away goals, but a five-goal conceded game is pretty disappointing, um, especially in the Champions League. In between that game, we faced um, a AS and Etienne in the league, away from home, beat them 1-0, and as you can see, it, we probably shouldn't have won this game. We scored in the 91st minute through Kanga, um, but yeah, the points should have been shared on that day. Next game was the Champions League quarterfinal second leg at home this time, and we could only manage a one-all draw, which did mean that we went out of the competition 6-4 on aggregate. Uh, Marek Hamsik opened the scoring for Chelsea, and Moutinho slotted away a penalty, but obviously we couldn't succumb from, not, we couldn't, we can't, we sir came to the goal difference, I should say, or the goal aggregate, which is very disappointing, but still, we've, I think that's actually our best ever run in the Champions League, which is pretty sad, considering, um, I have been playing for, what, six, seven seasons, um, and to only make a quarterfinal is pretty poor, but it is a positive, I guess, a positive going forward, hopefully we can make the semifinals, if not the final next season, um, obviously that is my goal, and, um, I would really love to win a Champions League with this team. Anyway, Bordeaux was up next, and a 4-1 home victory was in order. Adams opened the scoring in the second minute. Ulrich, Campos, and Gomez got our goals with Diego Roland getting one for Bordeaux, who, yeah, I was really surprised that they actually got relegated. But anyway, Valenciennes was our next opponent in the Coupe de France semi-final. We beat them 2-1 away from home, and Van Eek and Matinho getting our goals with a Matinho Man of the Match performance. Evian was up next, and we beat them 2-0 away from home. Gomez and Matinho. Matinho with another man of the match performance and a 9-match rating, which is very good to see at his age of 33, I think he is now. Um, FC Mess was up next in a game we lost 2-1. This is pretty much when the league was, you know, dead and buried. Um, obviously, it gave PSG a 3-point, uh, a 4-point gap, sorry, um, we were one point behind them at this stage, and um, as you can see, we only got a cashy own goal, so we were pretty poor on the day. Um, Van Eek played a 5.8, and I'm pretty sure that was his last game that he started of the season. So yeah, there was that. Obviously, the game you saw in the previous episode was the Coupe de France final. I'll go over it very quickly. The one goal coming from Christopher Faure in the left left back position in the 87th minute gave us our second piece of silverware this season. Of course, we did win the um, Trophy des Champions, which is, of course, the equivalent to the Community Shield. 
which is for some reason played in Vietnam, which is really weird. Anyway, FC Nantes was up next, away from home. We beat them 3-0, and our goals came from Matip, Kanga, and Lopez in the 90th. And our final game of the season, which I just played, was against Los Galil, and we beat them 2-1 at home. Gulor Kanga with a brace, and he also got sent off in the game. Isn't, isn't that just, you know, true to form? He did also pick up man of the match, despite that red card, which is... Oh, it's, a, it's a really weird thing to happen, you know, score two goals, get sent off, get man of the match. They did get one goal back, though, but it was too little too late. I did play counter-attacking at half-time, um, so good Carvers did pick up a goal, but it was obviously pretty pointless. So yeah, that basically wraps up the fixtures. Well, it actually does wrap up the fixtures, I don't know why I said basically. Um, have another little look at the league table, and we'll go over some of the charts... As you can see, we conceded quite a few goals as PSG had a fairly massive point uh, goal difference. Goal difference differential, I should say, yeah. So yeah, there was that. Um, let's have a look at PSG's. They beat Nance, or they had Nance on the last day, so they're always going to win that game. And um, yeah, PSG are back on top. So Marseille had one you know, special season, lost like two players, two key players, and they've dropped back into third. Um, and meanwhile, we've, you know, come second, well, we have come second for quite a few seasons in a row now, as you can see. Came fifth in that season, second again, sixth in that season, and, yeah, tenth in my first season. Seems like such a long time ago when I came tenth my first season. I'm surprised people even still watch this series after that, to be honest. Then we came sixth. Surprise second, you know, just beating Marseille there. Back down to fifth, no Champions League in the Europa League. Up to second, second, and now second again. So we've come second for three seasons in a row. Um, we've kind of established ourselves as the, you know, the, the this team to come second in the league. We might not ever, you know, win a league title, but anyway. Um, but let's have a look at the top goal scorers. As you can see, Carlos Fierro, obviously PSG, came first. Very impressed to see Horatio Gomez come in second with 22 goals. Um, obviously, I bought him, was it last season or the season before? Yeah, it was last season for 21 million from, I think, yeah, it was Juventus? Yes, Juventus. And um, he has turned into an extremely good player. He's still in 23 years old. That is the crazy thing. 18 heading, 17 dribbling, 17 finishing, decent composure. Um, very good physical stats, you know, he's got the pace and the strength and the jumping. Um, so yeah, you can pretty much see why he is worth 28.5 mil now. So there's that. Um, we've also got Kanger in here. I mean, this player, signed him on a free transfer, probably the best signing I've ever made um, on this series. I mean, dead set. This guy came on a free from Ros Rostov, yeah. Free from Rostov. I mean, he wasn't performing great at Rostov. C came here and he has... He's, he hasn't gone under a 7.22 in the seasons he's been here. He's actually gotten better with age, so there you go. Um, and he scored 18 goals this season, and he also topped the average rating chart with 7.75 in the league this year. Um, he also got 15 assists and came third in the most assists. We've got Lucas Mora for PSG. Charles Bassey, surprisingly, with the um, the injury to Oesterprak, pl did play most of the season as our right winger, so he got 16 and actually beat Kanger who is our advanced playmaker. League One does currently sit still in fifth place, which I don't think will ever probably move higher than that, unless myself, PSG, or Monaco, and not Monaco, I am Monaco, Marseille, I meant to say, um, actually start winning the Champions League on a regular basis. Um, let's have a look at the uh, top performers this season. Obviously, Kanga's, you know, number one. Um, surprisingly, um, Stefano Tesserin, on loan at Stade de Reims, um, for half the season, he's played very well, despite starting three games. Okay, that's probably why. I think he had an injury anyway. I should, probably should have just looked there. Um, but Papadopoulos, you know, he was on the fringe, well, he has been on the fringes the last two seasons, has, you know, come up very big. 43 starts, 6 goals, a 7.47, very impressive. Campos has had probably his best season at the club. 50 starts, 17 goals, 7.39. Obviously, Gomez, 41 starts. 32 goals in all games, and a 7.37. Um, Fabiano's had a good season so far out on loan. Where is he at? Atletico Mineiro. 
Um, he's actually progressing quite nicely. We'll have a look at his attribute increases. As you can see, he's, he's going up nicely. Um, getting regular game time, which is also good. Positive for his development. We have Ersterprak a little bit further down as our right winger. 28 starts, 8 goals, 7.32. And um, as as you can see, you know, natural team leader, Jao Matinho, he has started 45 games this season, scored 10 goals, most of them from the penalty spot, but anyway, and averaged a 7.31. Foray come up fairly big this season, been starting a lot at left back, um, obviously with the sale of Shaw. 28 starts, 7.30. Same as Mateep, who's started pretty much the same amount of games. Haji started 34 games, 7.19, a little bit disappointing. Kleber, very disappointing at right back, 51 starts, and he doesn't have any competition. So he's been started every game this season, basically. 7.15, not the best result in the world. He is only young still, so I will give him, obviously, more time. And hopefully in about two or three seasons, he should be, you know, probably the one of the... Well, he should be the best right back in the world, because he does play for me. We've got a few more players, I mean, the more disappointing players. As you can see, Ulrich was fairly disappointing for a player of his quality. As you can see, he's an absolute fucking machine. Like, to get him for that little from RC Strasbourg, 38,500. 38 and he's worth 28.5 mil now. That is ridiculous. Van Eek was a little bit disappointing, obviously, with those results and costing us the... Um, was it the, yeah, it was the um, Coupe de la Ligue semi-final, I think he cost us. So yeah, he started 35, 7.04, not the best in the, in the world. And obviously his form started to deteriorate towards the end of the season as well. Gonzalez, very, you know, unimpressive. Um, didn't even score a goal, but he did play most of the season as our ball-winning midfielder. And of course we have poor little Aubameyang down here. 10 starts, 15 subs. Only six goals. Couldn't even manage a seven match rating right there. And the players down here are just players like slowly integrated into the team apart from Oliviera, who was a mistake purchase when he was 15 years old. So, yeah, that basically is the ratings for the squad. Is there anything else I can go over? Um, I mean, I guess I could go over the players I brought in, but I don't really want to because I kind of want to leave that for preseason. So yeah, that's basically it, guys. Um, I might just have a look at something very quickly. I want to have a look at... Uh, I always forget how to do this, but... I'll have a look at our facilities, first of all. Training facilities, excellent. Great youth facilities. They are both actually being upgraded currently. Yeah, as you can see. Still in the planning stage, though, and they don't... They finish in about five, six months time, yeah, so they finish in November, um, and that's a little bit disappointing, because that's quite a way away, but that is good, our finances, we currently sit at 60 million, obviously, every season, it's expected to go down a little bit, we don't have any loans outstanding, um, obviously, the um, lack of attendance is really crippling to the club, um, but obviously, we do get pumped through our chairman, pumped, ca cash pumped in, I should say, um, if I jump into landmarks, is it? No. No. Competitions, maybe? No. Records. There we go. It's in records. Average attendance. As you can see, it's slowly gone up. You know, the first season was 7,000. It dropped, obviously, because we finished 10th in the league. Um, went back up, and it's slowly gotten better. Um, got up to 10,000 last season, and this season, it's, you know surpassed another 2,000 attendants, so the capacity is only 18,500, if I'm not mistaken, so we're very well on the way, yeah, 18,500 to actually starting to sell out the um, stadium on a regular basis, which is, you know, it's one of my aims to actually, first of all, first of all, buy the stadium, try and expand it if I can, and of course, if I can't, you know, further expand it, I would love to build a new stadium because I did have a stadium built after me on Football Manager 2011 with Arsenal. I had a massive Arsenal save on that. And it was um it was called, well, it was named after me anyway. And it was like an 80,000 capacity stadium. Um, we moved out of the Emirates. Anyway, off topic there. This is going to be the end of this episode, guys. So if you have enjoyed it, please give the video a like rating. Head over to my channel and subscribe. And um, if you could also add me on Twitter... Um, I'm going to start using Twitter a bit more. Hopefully, 
um, get in contact with a few more, you know, football manner, football manager YouTube channels. And um, yeah, I'd love to do some collaborations or network games or something like that um, with a few of those guys. Um, so yeah, have me on Twitter, guys, and um, I'll see you in the next episode, which will be preseason of the 2021 season. I really, really want to win the league.